Behind every decision and action we make lies willpower. My father, Dr. Lester Sumrall, referred to it as the potent power of the universe. We find ourselves using this power whenever we attempt a physically demanding chore, when we quit an addiction or even the daily tasks of life. Today's teaching will not only explore the will of man, but also of God and His Word impacting our will. I'm Pete Summerall. Watch and I know you'll be enriched spiritually by this teaching. Welcome to the Lester Summerall Teaching Series. Join Dr. Summerall as he shares lessons that are the result of over 50 years of ministering around the world. Today's teaching will focus on the will, the potent force of the universe. Today's lesson may be unique as far as you are concerned, speaking to you about the will of angels. Now, you may have thought, you know, that angels, you know, can do as they please, <laughs> uh, and that they're all perfect, and, and that they are all good. Of course, that is not true. Uh, angels have volitional powers, just like you have. Uh, angels have transgressed, just like uh, humans have because they have a will. You see, you cannot have love without will. If you say to a girl, you got to love me. No, oh no, no. That wouldn't be love. That would be slavery. You see, that would be compulsion. And so, will has to be free will. And, and so, you don't say you've got to love me. You say, will <laughs> you love me, you see. And, and God is the same. Now, you cannot have love any other way. The, the reason God has had so much trouble here on the earth was because God is love, and love is volitional. You cannot make your children love you. You have to win their love, and you l win their love through their will, that they will to love you. And so, beginning with that aspect, we'll take you into today's lesson, which is related to the will of angels. Now, now this reaches into the uh, the world of heaven and, and, and the world of spiritual beings, and uh, we don't apologize for it. We believe in angels, and we believe in spiritual beings. What we are seeking to do in this series of studies is to reveal the potential of will and of willpower, and that very likely in, in your solistic uh, total being, that your will is the strongest factor and should be given a lot of attention to, and yet, as I have said in these lessons, I have never seen a series of lessons in my life on will. There will be when these are out. There many, many will say, yeah, I see that, and they'll start teaching it. But until this moment, I have not witnessed it. But we will witness it. And until uh, we can cause you uh, to know the power of your will and that the will must be subjected to somebody, either to God or the devil, uh, it will be, then, then you must not know exactly how to make decisions, how to live without knowing the strength of will uh, uh, to dominate our lives. And so now we come to the will of angels. If we could begin uh, back in the, in, the, in the old Bible, in Judges chapter 13 and verse 16, it says, And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, uh, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. Uh, this angel was showing him that though he came to reveal, uh, you know, God to him and what God was going to do for him, he had a will. He said, I will not do this or that. You see, we want to reveal to you in these lessons the will of angels. Now, what are angels? <laughs> angels are created beings. They, they have no navel. They weren't born of a woman. They're created beings. Uh, Elohim, which is the Hebrew word for God in Genesis chapter 1, 
in the beginning, O Elohim, I created the heavens and the earth. This, this mighty God and his, and his select wisdom created angels, our servants, our messengers, they are for him, and they possess willpower. They do not have to serve God, or they may serve God, whichever their will, you know, provides. Angels are super intelligent creatures uh, beyond man. They have the knowledge of two worlds. They have the knowledge of the spirit world, and they have the knowledge of the physical world. And so they, they are two world creatures. Uh, sometimes the, the wall of partition is broken down and you can see angels. We have a number of people that we have known that believe they have seen angels. And the Bible is explicit with this, that many saw angels with their natural, they came through the partition wall uh, from the spirit world into the material world and they were seen. And they are creatures that can talk to God, obey God, and they're creatures that can talk with man. And so they're very in intelligent creatures. Uh, God designed, <laughs> isn't that a beautiful word? God designed angels, and He gave them super powers of decision to decide on special factors. And He did this because He wants to merit their love. And love always has to be merited. The reason you have divorces in this country is simply because the girl that you love, after you get her, you don't treat her as you did before you got her. You got it? <laughs> and that's the same with, with girls. You, you, you want a man and you, and you do everything you can to please him, and after you marry him, you don't do that anymore. And, and you blame it on this and that, I didn't get this and I didn't get that. And then, then you run from one another and curse and curse one another. Which, which is a bad thing. Now, God gave you that, that prerogative there, you see? God gave it. Uh, Adam did not have to serve God. He could only serve God if he wanted to, you see? Uh, and otherwise, God can't have love. Love is intelligent, and love is free. And, and if you don't have love, it's free will. My wife does not have to love me. I want her to love me, so I treat her in certain ways to cause her to love me, you see? And she does the same for me. Well, God does the same for all of us. You're getting to understand something about will that is tremendous, that is great. Without this freedom of will, uh, we'd all be slaves of destiny. You know, we'd, we, we wouldn't be the creatures that we are today. We shall see uh, how angels in heaven use their willpower as powers of choice. Most of them, uh, you know, uh, thank God that they obey. A beautiful look into the angelic world is in Isaiah chapter 6 beginning in verse 1. It's one of my choice parts of the Bible. If you'd open up to it, Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Um, also, the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, His train filled the temple. Above it the, were the seraphim, and with each one had six wings. With twain He covered His feet, with twain He did fly, and one cried unto another and said, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. The posts of the door moved at the voice of Him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Uh, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto Him, having a live coal, in his hand, which he had taken from the, with the tongues from off, off the altar. Now, here we find that in the king, near that King Uzziah uh, died, that he saw angels. And these, these angels were in perfect harmony with the Lord, crying, Holy, 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 the Lord of hosts, you see? And the whole earth is full of his glory. They were singing this under the, under the Most High God. They wanted to do this. When Isaiah saw it, he said, hey, I'm not holy enough for seeing this. One of those angels went and took a living coal that put it to his lips that it, he might be cleansed and that he could see that he, could see that he, was, he was a person that adequate to see this great vision of God. So here we find angels 
in worship before the throne because they were before the throne and they had six wings and they were crying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. And so we find uh, angels worshiping volitionally because they want to, because they like to, because they're in joy, <laughs> smiling big and, and, and singing magnificently un, unto the Lord. So they did this with their will. They, you know, they willed to do it. Now, in a second instance here, in the Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, And the four living creatures had each one of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Here we find praise as an act of the will. So not only do we find angels in worship before the throne, we find them also in ecstasy, in praise before the throne. So praise is an act of will. Uh, you go into a meeting, uh, one praises God, another don't. Well, God doesn't hit him on the head for not doing it, you know. Uh, he, he won't be happy. He won't rejoice because he has no praise. Pr uh, praise brings rejoicing. It, it cleanses the inside and causes the inside to flow out in, in melody, you see. And so uh, here the angels of heaven, with an act of their will, were singing praises unto God. Now, uh, it was not an act of feeling. You know, I feel this way, I feel this. Then you would be dealing with your emotions, which is another world. Maybe one day we'll take 10 lessons on emotions, teaching about emotions. It's, it's a great world there uh, of, of teaching about emotions, uh, human emotions, God's emotions, angels' emotions, you know. Every intelligent creature in the universe not only, not only has free will, he, al he also has emotional powers that he must control. God controls his, Jesus controlled his, you can control yours, you must be in control of it. Most people are not in control of their emotions. Their, 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 their emotions are incidental, up or down, up or down. You know, if, if ain't sailors feeling good, they're, they're all right. If ain't sailors sick, then they're sick too. You know, uh, you should have within you the, 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 the propensities to cause your total being uh, to walk the way you want it to walk. So your willpower must be under the divine control of your self-life and your spiritual life in order that you can live the way that you want to live. So angels cause to praise. And angels, by willpower, protect the righteous. Now, we're, we're showing you the will of angels. In Psalm 34 and 7, it says, And the angel of the Lord, that means uh, Jehovah's angel, isn't that something? He must have been an archangel, something very great. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that, that fear him, and he delivereth them. Isn't that something? The angel of the Lord encampeth about us and delivers us. So here we find that an angel, by his willpower, protects good people, righteous people, holy people. Now, you can believe the Bible or not believe the Bible. That's your own prerogative, of course. I accept the Bible. I believe there are angels. And our lesson today on it not, does not deal with their uh, being or not being. It, it is in that they have this thing called will that we have gone over so easily in other times of our life and not correctly understood the power of will. You are what you have willed to be, you see. So we're teaching you how to rise higher with a stronger will, not a weak will, sick will, but a real will to rise up in God. Now, not only do they protect the righteous, and if we could tell you stories, my goodness, of how angels have protected missionaries, uh, how, how uh, men have come to destroy missionaries on the field, and would, the next day you would say, we'd like to see that army again that was there last night. And in what army? So we saw tall men, 10 foot tall, uh, were very bright in their, in, their, in their looks, and they were walking all around your place, and we were afraid to hurt you. Y you see, the angels of the Lord, the Bible says, encampeth around about them that fear Him. If you love God and you serve God, uh, if God would open your spiritual eyes, you might be just amazed at what's there. And thank God for His protecting power uh, from, from the angels. All right, your, your next thought, the angels will bring in the harvest. Now, this reaches into a, a future 
a future situation, but it shows you that the angels have a will and a will to do things for God. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 39, he's, Jesus said, He answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there should be no sign given it but the sign of the prophet, of the prophet uh, Jonas. And then he tells you on, on down there that these, that these angels uh, in the last days, that they, that they will bring in the harvest of God. That, and that's, uh, that's the church of the Lord Jesus. That is the bride of Christ, you see. And th that is the one that, uh, that, uh, that we are to, to follow. And, and we are the one that He will cause the angels to bring in this glorious harvest of the last days. Uh, uh, Billy Graham is having a tremendous move of God in, in the British Isles. Uh, the angels of God are helping to bring in a harvest. We, we met Mr. Louis Palau a few days ago in London, and uh, for six weeks in that mighty city of London, he was bringing in a heart. The angels are there, and he had told you in a hurry. He said, this thing is so good, it must be the angels. Uh, but in the end time, uh, just before Jesus Christ comes back, the, the angels will bring in the glorious, the glorious harvest of our God. Now, we can begin right back, if you like, uh, in the beginning of time. Uh, we can begin in the Garden of Eden in the, first, in, the, you know, in the first chapter of Genesis, of the first part of Genesis. In Genesis 3 and 24, it says, So he, God, drove out the man, Adam, and placed him at the east of the Garden of Eden. And, and there he put, he put cherubim with a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way to the tree of the tree of life. So here we find angels uh, exerting their willpower and their strength right at the Garden of Eden. I wouldn't want you to think that angels came on the scene late in history and that we didn't know much about angels, you know, un until recent times. Because right in the Garden of Eden, you know, just at the time that Adam was compelled to leave the garden, we find that we find there that there was a cherubim angels of God, standing with a flaming sword which turned every way and was placed at the Garden of Eden so that Adam could not return back. So the first thing that we ever find out that angels were doing was to keep Adam and Eve from the tree of life, that they wouldn't live forever in these natural, carnal, rebellious bodies and that He had created. And so uh, we just wanted you to know that it is most remarkable that on the ver first pages of the Bible and the first pages of human history, we find angels operating in great power and great anointing. That the cherubim were obeying God. Adam must not be, must be kept from the, the tree of, the, of eternal uh, human life on this planet. And so the angel was ex exerting his willpower in order that this could not be done. A step further, angels are brought prophecy. They brought prophecy to man. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 21, it says, Yet while I was speaking in, in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, uh, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. So here we find Gabriel, and he said, I was sent. Gabriel said, I was sent. This means that he had a will, that he was obedient. And, and uh, it is uh, amazing, you know, uh, uh, what he revealed on, under Daniel of the future. Some of it's still not fulfilled yet of the coming empires. He told him about the, you know, the coming of, of world empires like the Persian Empire, the Grecian Empire, the Roman Empire, and what they would even be like. And, and so here we find angels producing and bringing prophecy to mankind from the Father in heaven. Now we also find angels can be entertained by human, and, and this we should think of, and, and uh, in Hebrews uh, t 13 and 2, it says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, whereby some have entertained angels and didn't realize it. Now you find Abraham was unaware that the angels that came to his tent were angels. He thought they were regular people. Pretty unusual. He made a feast for them. But he found that they, were, they had a message about Sodom, that Sodom was going to be destroyed. And so here we find that it is possible I wouldn't want to go into that because I have a book on angels. My mother believed that we entertained angels in our home, 
and she gives you the reasons uh, for that. And it was angels that presided over Sodom's doom. They, they came down and they pronounced the doom and it did come to pass just as they had said. And, and so angels have been and are very influential persons functioning by their will, you know. They, they will to do what God asks them to do. Uh, very exciting, which we should think about, is an angel announced the coming of the world Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 1, verse 26, it says, In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin was ma Mary. The angel said unto her, Hail, thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with thee, and blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled, and saying, What cast in what manner of salutation is this? And the angel said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor uh, with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in, in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his, of his father David. Now, here was an, an angel volitionally announcing the coming of a world Savior to, to Mary, the mother of Jesus. <laughs> you know, to, to me that is a, a, a super uh, situation, an amazing, an amazing situation that an angel by his own volitional powers was willing, was willing to come and, uh, and, uh, and say, now I want to tell you what God is going to do. And it was a prophetic thing. It says, without a husband you're going to conceive and bring forth a son, just like Isaiah said, and, and this son shall be called Jesus and he shall, he shall save his people. So what a remarkable what a remarkable uh, job the angel, the angel had functioning through his own willpower. He didn't have to obey. He wanted to obey. He did obey. So you have the same willpower of an angel. An angel has the same willpower as you have. And therefore, God depends upon you that in that area of your, of your solical being, uh, that in your willpower, you produce the decisions that are spiritual, that are good, and that are pure, and that then God will bless you for it. But God does not make you do that. Now, we can look further into angels. There were angels chained in the river Euphrates. And in Revelation chapter 9, verse 14, it says, Say to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose, the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Isn't that amazing? They, they, they transgressed, you know. They transgressed. And they were evil angels. He said they, and they, were, they were released and prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men, wicked angels, not the good ones of heaven, rebellious ones. They were angels who, who had fallen from God's grace and fallen from God's purposes, and they were imprisoned in the bottom of the river Euphrates. Isn't that amazing? And they will return to earth in great anger and hatred and will seek to destroy man. Now we also find that angels willfully cause their own, their own judgment. Uh, in Matthew 25, 41, it says, Then shall they say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And, and so by their willful rebellion against God, uh, they prepared for themselves their own judgment. It was prepared for the devil and his angels because of their transgression. Now you can go to the same place, and, and you will all be spirits at that time. You'll be able to see each other and know each other. But how much better, how much more glorious it would be if you would serve the Lord and love the Lord. Now that is a, a small introduction uh, into what angels are like and that they, like you, have a willpower. They also have, like you, an emotional power. They also, like you, have a mind power. So they have all the facilities uh, and the faculties of a soul just like you have. You know, they have a mind, emotions, and a will. And, and so, uh, and, and, these, and these studies on the, on the will, the main thing that I wish to show is, is the broad spectrum that every intelligent creature in the universe possesses will. You have not studied will in order to know what makes you do certain things, what makes you act certain ways, what makes you look at certain things, and what makes you the person that you are, and will is the answer. And we're digging down deep into that, that your will can be consecrated to God and that your will can be obedient to God like the angels, and that your will will walk in peace with God, and that one day God will say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. You willed to live 
the good life. And now I will to give you a place in heaven where you can live there forever. Isn't that great? That is really exciting. It is really thrilling. And so we urge you today to walk in the way of most of the angels. Uh, walk in God in submission and saying to the Lord, Lord, I am willing. I am. See, there's the word will, willing. As I've told you before, about 3,220 times, uh, it, just in the Strong's Concordance, do we have I will, or will, or willfully, you see, a willingness, you know. <laughs> uh, Twelve pages of them. Twelve pages of them. And, and yet we've given so little uh, attention to something that God gave such amazing expression to. And seeing that God has given it great expression, we're going to do it too. We're going to teach what the will is. And we're going to get the will in the mind of Christ and get that will into the, into the desires of God that we might perform on this earth. Sometimes you will not understand why you do things if you don't know that you have a will, that it is an entity inside of you, and that it must be born again, it must be renewed, it must be what God wants it to be. So let's move the right direction. We do have other lessons coming up in this. We want you to see those too. May I bless you. Father, bless these. Let them truly be blessed. Show them that like angels they have willpower, and that willpower is the greatest force in the universe to change things, to make things, to do things. So help us to have our wills conform to God in Jesus' name. And if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, why don't you right now please say the sinner's prayer. Just say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Right where you are right now, He will forgive you of your sins and will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It is a privilege for Lassie Broadcasting to present these life-changing teachings by Dr. Sumrall. If you found today's message valuable to your life, we encourage you to visit our website and obtain any of the inspiring audio or video recordings Dr. Sumrall made over his lifetime. Your purchase will ensure the continued support of Lassie Broadcasting for many more years of teachings by my father. I'm Pete Sumrall, and thanks for watching.